Today we're going to work on buzz saws. Um, super excited to do this. Um, yeah, before we before we get started, before we pick up the point, every week you guys are getting used to this. We're going to warm up with a little bit of timing and direction review. Um, these warm ups are actually going to be much bigger than what we're doing today. Buzz saws are kind of small, close to the body sorts of movements, but it's really good to get your mind moving and your body moving both at the same time with warming up with timing and direction. So if you take together same in the wall plane and just move your arms around a little bit, you can move them backwards, forwards, you can complete the circles, you can stall and change directions and just get your body a little bit limber. It's always really good to warm up. Um, if you move to the wheel plane and do split same, it's like you're a swimmer and your arms are 180 degrees apart, so they're in split time, but they're moving the same direction. So it's like freestyle, it's like backstroke. And this is a really good spot to remember to open your shoulders up wide so you're not crunching your shoulders. You want to use your torso in these, right? Okay, and then if we go to together opposite, so that's the butterfly, and that's if we're doing it in the wheel plane, stand here and one arm forward, one arm back, and they come to the top, and then bring them down the other side. And use your legs while you do this. Use your torso, it's a really good warm up. And then go the other direction. You know, get your body feeling a little limber as we move into this and recognize all that timing and direction. Um, if I turn into the wall plane from the wheel plane, you can just kind of gather up and bring down. It's like you're doing mountain pose in yoga and bring it down. Or you can send that energy up and do jazz hands and you're on Broadway like you've always wished that you were, right? And then um, remember, that is together opposite that's also in the floor plane. That's like doing breaststroke, right? So remember all these different things, all these different metaphors and similes and these movements that you, you can do. Then split opposite is like double dutch. So your arms are crossing at the side, doing split time. So split time always crosses at the side. Same time either crosses at the top or mirrors the entire time. So split time opposite direction right okay so um today uh well actually to warm up your mind keep warming up your mind keys to unlocking poi you, there are things that i will hit every week and that's because they're really important they're the things that you can build off of and, and kind of work your way backwards and say oh i can figure that out because i know this because i know that the, the wheel plane, the wall plane, the floor plane. Remember your planes. Remember your timing and direction, and you have different driving styles. And when you combine driving styles in different timings and directions, in different planes, that's like the universal grammar of poi. That is, you can combine all these different movements um, doing all those different things. And then remember, one of the things today that we're going to kind of talk a little bit about is the relativity of the poi to each other. That's what we're talking about with timing and direction together same versus the relativity to you, which is much more variable. When you talk about clockwise and counterclockwise um, and forward and backwards, really that's a relative sort of thing to you. And we're going to be doing a lot of relativity today. Um, and remember when you move, you have uh, some of the basic movements are stalls where they're, they're in the same spot. Pendulums, when they move back and forward, and that's a periodic momentum. And circles, which are a consistent momentum. So we're going to be hitting that a little bit. Um, remember, you always want to practice your timing direction, practice all timings and directions, forward, reverse, counterclockwise, all that sort of stuff. Okay? So those are kind of the ground rules, the warm up that we're working off of. Last week, we worked on a little more turning, 
uh, in various timings and directions, because we had originally just learned um, together time, same direction, how to turn. Last week we did a variety of different turns, right? And we also talked about two beats, because when you cross your body um, from one of the wall planes to the other wall plane, you end up drawing an X on the side, okay? And that is the two beat, especially when you move it to different parts of your body, you can do different sorts of reels and things like that. They're really neat, but they're really important for that turning from one wall plane to the other wall plane. Um, one of the things that we talked about is turning from one wheel plane to another wheel plane is we kind of connect things with a pendulum. And this is one of those things where I think of it that way. And it's not, you can kind of think of it as circles to circles. But when you're switching from forward to reverse, there's this moment that I like to give myself, that I think of it as a pendulum. And the tighter it is, the less of a pendulum it is. But you can do these long things where you really kind of drag it out as a pendulum. And it's really useful to think of that that way and to think of kind of an upside down pendulum as you go over the top. Because what are circles except for a bottom pendulum and a top pendulum constantly going in the same direction because a pendulum the pendulum is the periodic motion but the shape is the half circle right so i like to think of that pendulum in there and i will come back to that momentarily so when you're turning through from wheel plane to wheel plane there will be that moment of pendulum that's really nice transition moment and when you're moving from wall plane to wall plane there's that two beat, that X on the wall in front of you, on the, uh, to the side of you, um, that is about that moment of transition. Remember those, I will come back to that. So, uh, this week we're gonna be doing a lot of stuff in miniature. And I don't know how many people read my post yesterday, but I love Rafael Lozano Hemmer. He's an artist um, who, he does interactive art, kind of uh, another side of my life. Um, but he did this one piece uh, that was on a beach. It was in Santa Monica, but it's gone to different places, Mexico and Spain. Um, and he had this camera that was on a little sandbox where people could play with their hands. And it was projected onto the beach um, so people could see these hands and people could see the projection of the people from the beach into the sandbox so they could play with each other with different sizes and different scales um, and I love buzz saws because they're a different scale that can really teach you so much that you get a slightly different perspective from it by being big and looking down on it and seeing this happen versus trying to see from what you look like from a different perspective um, so when we do these buzz saws are kind of a special plane they they are in the buzzsaw plane, which is really very much like the wheel plane. It's kind of like you've taken the wheel plane, but rather than your poi outside your hands, your poi are gonna go inside your hands. So we can do this one at a time just to kind of get you familiarized with it. If I had this poi on the outside, that would be in the wheel plane. If I bring it between my hands, suddenly it's in the buzzsaw plane. It's a little bit different. It, it seems like, well, that would be exactly the same. A little bit different. And when you take two of them, so do one at a time, just put a hand out. You might want to shorten up your poi a little bit. You can see that I'm, you know, I, I, I'm using different poi today because these are a little bit lighter. They're a little easier to do buzz saws with. Um, they're my fire drums poi from way back in the day. Um, so you can shorten up by wrapping and then give the, the shortened leash, hold it between your fingers like that. And that'll really give you a lot more control and you can do small and then you can lengthen it out if you want. One of the things to really work on with poi is to be able to, actually this is a total side thing, but be able to wrap your hands kind of while you're going because you might want to change uh, your grip as you're spinning to do different things. So, buzz saws can be in all the timing and directions. You can do 
together same. You can do uh, split same, which is kind of the classic buzzsaw look where I think they get their name from. Um, you can do butterfly, which is uh, together opposite. And you can really see butterfly here crossing at the top and the bottom and split opposite, which is very similar to butterfly, but they just cross at the side. So you can kind of really see how the, the momentum change changes the entire timing and direction. Up and down is butterfly, side to side is split up. So tog up and split up. Um, so spin those a little bit. We're going to work really on uh, split same today. So this one. That's the classic one. You can play with all the other ones on your own. But just spin them here and, and let, them, let them be next to each other. I'll kind of show you right here. I kind of bent my planes there. And you see they're not exactly lined up. You can, if you want, line them right on top of each other. Your hands kind of get in the way. You can have them just slightly off of each other and your hands don't have to do as much work and they're kind of... They're nice, and when you're at the side, you get that same effect where they're overlapped. So, um, that spinning poi between your hands. There's also, if you want to, if you want to get nerdy about it, there's an interior plane between your hands and your body. And if you're kind of like, okay, this all feels like, um, this all feels like, you know, get up here. Um, we're doing everything in the in the wheel plane. This is very similar to a wheel plane. This is very similar to a wall plane. So that'll become a little bit relevant later on. And then you can also buzz saw in the floor plane as well. Okay. So we are going to learn buzz saw fountains, which is kind of like the combination of things you can do with a spin buzz saw flower anti-spin buzzsaw flower and splitting your buzzsaws because we worked on flowers a little bit um, a couple weeks ago. So if you want to do a buzzsaw out to the side. So to me, I'm reaching out to my left hand side and I'm spinning in a forward spin. Okay. What we're going to do is just like if we were going to be turning from one wheel plane to the reverse wheel plane, I'm going to take my right hand and I'm going to trace it along the ground and move it to the other side. And then I can return it by coming back over the top. But really what we're doing is we want to just leave that left hand in place, move that right hand, Check your timing and direction. Get it back if it, if it moved off a little bit with that split. And then bring it back over the top. And work that for a while. This is going to be really essential. And you should feel like the poi are pointing at each other when uh, you come to the middle. because it's like they're doing this, but they're just doing it further apart. Okay, so we've got that right hand down. Then what you want to do is just let the left hand follow. So drag the left hand, that pendulum along the floor, and suddenly you're doing a reverse buzz saw on the other side. And then you can bring that around to split it again, bring it over the top, and then bring it back to the bottom. And then if you bring the left over the top and bring the right back, you are doing a two-petal flower, right, with buzz saws. You keep doing that for a little bit, and you go to reverse, and to forward, and to reverse. So that's a two-petal buzzsaw flower, but what you really want to do to be doing buzz saws is let them go all throughout the flower. Remember, you can put as many petals as you want in a flower, and we want to get a bunch of petals in the flower. So this is where we're going to drop one of the poi. 
because we're going to focus on the transition from forward to reverse. Because that's this is the this is basically if you learn one thing today, this is the key to doing buzz saws. Is this transition right here? Okay. So I'll come up close and I'll I'll change my orientation so I would have been like this. So keep one poi in your hand and keep the other hand parallel because remember buzz saws are your two hands. Your poi are between your arms. So this really kind of keeps you honest. And then just bring it down to the bottom. And at some point, you're going to feel like you need to flip your hand from one side to the other. Okay? And that is that pendulum moment, is that flip. Remember, we were doing a big pendulum here. And I was talking about earlier where it's kind of like, okay, when you go from forward to reverse, there's kind of a pendulum in the middle. But the smoother it gets, the more you can kind of make that disappear. But that moment right there is a pendulum along the bottom, right? So take your hands and go slow. And just at some point, while your poi is at the bottom, flip your hand over and let it go into reverse. So you're spinning forward and let that drag across and flip your hand. So you want to maybe at first emphasize that a little bit and then try to make it disappear a little bit. It's not going to disappear entirely. Okay, I did that with my right hand. Now I'm going to try my left hand. So have your other hand as a guide spinning forward and then it'll flip over my hand. And I'm going to actually pick up my computer and try to give you guys, whoops, an above ground view of this without hopefully, wish me luck on not dropping my computer. So I'm spinning like this and then it flips. So you can see how the orientation has flipped. I don't know how well that worked or not, but that is live video for you. So now that you've done that along the bottom, let's practice it along the top a little bit too. You've got one hand and one poi, spin it in reverse. Because remember, just like you're, turn, you're, you're spinning in the wheel plane in reverse, that's when we go over our head over to the other side. So you're spinning in reverse buzzsaw, and then bring your hands up to the top and switch them in parallel, okay? So we do that again, and just keep practicing that switch. And try to make it seamless, but it doesn't have to be entirely seamless. Okay? Now we put them together. So, you got this, I'm gonna tilt this down and back it up a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna pass through the bottom right now. So we've got a little buzz saw. And then at some point, we're just going to let them go in reverse. Now when we do this, remember we were doing one poi, then the other poi before. It's essentially what we're gonna be doing the whole time um, because they're in split time. They can't move exactly the same. They're not gonna move through that bottom moment at exactly the same point anyways. So what you're gonna be doing is kind of letting one hand lead and the other hand follow as you go into reverse, okay? So don't feel like it has to all rotate at once. You're gonna kind of quickly go boom, boom. And that's at the speed of your buzzsaw. Because remember, these poi are 180 degrees apart, okay? Then once you've got that bottom, you practice the top a little bit, you're in reverse, do it slow at first, where you split one buzzsaw on the other, and then over. And then go to the bottom, bring one through, let it split, feel what that feels like, bring the other, bring it up to the top. Let it split, bring it over, whoops, and bring it down to the bottom. You are doing buzzsaw fountains. And let that split 
if you feel like it, that's a stylistic choice to let that split be emphasized for a moment. It doesn't have to be this seamless thing. I actually often uh, let that split show a little bit, and I'll let you see a little bit more about that later. So now we've done that. That's a spin flower because we are going from the left side down to the bottom, up over the top. We're making a circle that is going in the same direction as our buzzsaw, just like we did spin flowers um, a couple weeks ago, right? But we're just doing the same thing in buzzsaw, which is pretty great, which also means we can do anti-spin flowers, which is when the circle goes in the other direction. I think the easiest way of learning this is to just follow your path that you just took backwards. So if you are spinning in reverse on the right hand side, actually I would spin, start spinning forward on your left hand side and take it through so you're going spin and then just take it back and you're actually going anti-spin. It's one of those things where you'll say, what is going on for a little bit? It feels almost like the same motion, but because those turns are, are very similar, that, that turn uh, through the bottom, and that's really what you're trying to work on. So you don't even need to take it all the way up and all the way to the bottom. Just try that turn back and forth. And you're going from spin to anti-spin. So similarly, we can take it up to the top and split it and bring it through. And right now I'm in anti-spin, so I'm spinning. I face to the right, spin in reverse, take it down to the bottom, through my arms, up to the top, through my arms, down to the bottom. So that's something that I'm going to have to show you somewhat quickly. Um, if we were in person, I would be spending about a half hour working on that through you, with you. Remember what you can do, though. You can always, if you feel like, oh my gosh, I was getting it in one direction, totally can't get in the other direction. Yeah, tennis balls in nylons work great. Um, I like long athletic socks. You can drop a tennis ball. You can do... I think a water balloon is my favorite. The, I have tennis balls right now, um, but a water balloon that you don't fill to where the balloon is expanding. You let the balloon just kind of hang there. You don't put it on the tap. You just let it kind of fill as you hold it down below and catch, then tie it off. So it won't be very tense. It'll be like one of those unrewarding water balloons that you throw and it bounces off someone because you want it to bounce off you. Um, so I love the water balloons or just fill it with rice or lentils. Um, so remember, you can always take one hand, have the other hand. And so if you start at the bottom, start at the very bottom, you spin forward, up your left hand side to the top and feel that little change and bring it down your right hand side and change at the bottom. So do this one-handed stuff. It really helps you to hold um, your planes properly to work that. So if you're having problems with that anti-spin or if you're having problems with that spin, I would say start with the spin. So that means the formula is reach to your left hand side, spin forward, Take it under the ground for spin. Or you can reach to your right hand side, spin in reverse, and then take it to the ground for anti-spin. Because that's basically making your two circles go in opposite directions for the anti-spin. So the great part with this, you're going to have to work on buzz saws for a little bit, but this is kind of the advanced uh, module of this lesson. Um, is splitting your buzz saws. And even if you don't have your buzz saws down quite yet, once you get this, this is really easy to learn and it will help you with so many advanced moves. So you've got your buzz saw at the bottom. You can bring it to the top 
and you flip over. You have your hands on opposite sides. Uh, basically, one hand has transitioned, the other hand hasn't. If you bring it down to the bottom in parallel and then bring it back up together, what you are doing now is you're splitting your buzz saws because the hand, remember, if you reverse what you were doing, suddenly you were going in anti spin. So, this hand that is crossing over the transition point and coming down, it's doing a regular spin flower, okay? This other hand that's just going to the top and coming, I was doing it the wrong way, that if it goes to the top and then comes back down, that's in spin. The one that goes up, crosses over, actually these are both in spin right now. Um, no, this one's in, sorry, sometimes your brain gets moving so fast on that. Basically, as you do this, rather than crossing over, um, you can create, these are both in spin, but they're split, okay? And then if you go back, you can bring it back around and you can basically change directions. I'm breaking my brain temporarily. Anyways, what happens is, if you bring it to the top, you split, and then you separate them, you end up doing two different moves with your hands. This one on the right is on anti-spin because, there we go. So when you flip this, sorry about that digression, when you flip this, this hand to the right, by following the same path, is going to go on anti-spin, okay? Sorry, I was doing anti-spin with the other hand. Sometimes you get these, I started the whole thing in anti-spin. Sorry, delete that part out. We're going to start this way, bring it up to the top, then continue with this hand to the left in spin, to the right in anti-spin. So this hand, sorry about that. When I go in spin forward, bring through the bottom, come up to the top, and then the hand that continues in the same direction as going spin, the hand that has reversed is in anti-spin. And basically what you can do is one hand will be in spin and one hand will be in anti-spin. And you can bring them together and you can bring them apart. So you can basically flip over from spin to anti-spin and mix the two. Um, and that can be something that's pretty magical. You can even leave one in one place while you go around the circle and bring it back. So what you're doing is the beginning of hybrids where you're doing two moves at once by learning to split really at the bottoms and the tops. So that's why you really want to be able to pause when you bring up to the top at that moment of transition because that's a great place to start doing something else, okay? <sighs> Sorry for getting my brain a little bit twisted there. Like I said, live video. Um, so yeah, that uh, is basically the spin buzzsaw, the anti-spin buzzsaw, um, and really practicing to split them to really improve your dexterity. The number one job that you're gonna to wanna to do is practicing switching at the bottom in directions. So when you're going forward to reverse at the bottom, that's gonna be your spin flower. When you're going reverse to forward at the top, that is spin flower. And when you're going forward to reverse at the top, that's anti-spin. And when you're going reverse to Forward to reverse at the top is anti-spin. And then reverse to forward at the bottom is anti-spin as well. So practice those transitions, split them, come backward and forward. Use them as kind of these balance points when you split your hands and bring them together to learn off of. So that's it, everyone. 
I hope you have an excellent week. Um, hit me up if you have any questions. Um, and yeah, we will, I think next week might be the week where we finally talk weaves. I know that's the one that everyone wants to dive in like on their very, very first day. But how do I do a weave? Next week we'll work on a three beat weave. So cool. Thank you all very much. Stay safe and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.